You know, I love the theater in L.A. You know, Los Angeles is getting better theater since I moved from New York here to Hollywood, California. When I first arrived, it was horrifying. But since the New Yorkers have moved to L.A., well, the theater. And San Francisco is a great theater town like New York. And I'm talking to a lovely lady right now from San Francisco, Alexis Lizen. How are you? Very well. How are you? From San Francisco. That's true. You are in a wonderful play. It's called The Last Hairdresser. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that play. It's, it's, it's dynamic. Thank you. It's um it's a play that we that was first produced in San Francisco about a year and a half ago. Uh huh. And um and and it was a real big success there and it's really a lot of fun and then it we took it here. So You're from San Francisco originally or no? Uh actually yeah, originally yes. Uh -huh. I was born there but then I was raised here in LA. In LA? Did you were in here at the Beverly Hills High School? Did you <laughs> attend here? <laughs> no, I like didn't. Like Monica Lewinsky? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a very famous school, the Beverly Hills High School. No, I didn't uh -huh. go to school here. Uh -huh. I went to school out in North Hollywood, uh -huh. Oakwood. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Who am I sitting? You're sitting with a, a, a fabulous actor. His name is it's Brian true. Beacock. How are you, Brian? Very good, thank you. You're in the play. You are the outrageous one. One of the many. One of the many. <laughs> there yes. are many. Yes. Tell me about this, uh, the last hairdresser. Well, the character I play is Foley, and he is one of the last hairdressers. The subtitle of the play is The Deconstruction of the Vicious Queen, mm -hmm. of which I am one, and I'm vicious. Are you a vicious queen? <laughs> I, in the no, show, in I'm the a vicious show, queen. In the show, I know you yeah. are, but... I'm know. the salt of the earth, otherwise. But. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from originally? Uh, San Francisco Bay Area. So everyone's from San Francisco in the show, practically, isn't it? Well, there are some of us, there, there, the director and and me. Yes. That was grammatically incorrect. And <laughs> okay. uh, thank you. And somebody else uh -huh. in the show yeah. were all from the original cast in San Francisco. But the rest of the people were actually cast out of LA. So and Brian happens to have been, been born in, that in, in LA and you cast, cast out of LA. Yeah. yeah. Was it tough uh, at the beginning when you went for the reading of that when you looked at that script and you said, "Oh, I have it. I can carry on with it." No, actually it was very difficult and it's very it's very biting and it's very wordy and uh, Anything with more than three syllables tends uh -huh. to confuse a blonde. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, well, so you did really well at that. He did. I think yeah. it's the best I ever did was that the audition has just been downhill ever since. No, so. uh, really. <laughs> no. I went to see that show and I thought well, you were outrageous. It's very it. yeah, fun. It's a it's very, very outrageous. The audiences just are screaming at mm -hmm. this play. Yeah. Why are they screaming such a, a campy play? Because it's uh, real life stuff, you know. Uh -huh. That's what really happens mm -hmm. in hairdressers. Tell me. It is. It is real life. It's also it's it's heightened. Um, it's exaggerated, and it's we say things that people want to say mm -hmm. and don't. And everything's said in this show, mm -hmm. and it's said with bright lights and hairspray and and flying sets and quick change costumes and music. It's very exciting. Now I discovered that you sang on stage naked. Yes. Tell me about for quite it. a long time. 
a co but you were in the Naked Singers. Naked Boy Singing. Naked Boy Singers? At the Celebration Theater. I originated the role of the Naked Maid uh, last March 28th, I guess uh -huh. it was. Uh -huh. And uh, How were you? Just completely no Completely leaves? naked. Really? Every once in a while a That was your tie. birthday suit and just stood yeah. there? Start singing? What kind of songs were you singing? It's all original songs that were commissioned by composers uh, from around the country. Right. Naked composers. Naked composers. Naked composers. <laughs> uh, songs <laughs> about being naked, uh, high, the high school shower, the, uh, f the flirtation through uh, two uh, windows in, in the city. Uh, uh -huh. Um, there's a beautiful pas de deux that we did, a ballet. Um, it's a wonderful show. Uh -huh. yeah. You did Magic Theater in San Francisco. I have worked there, yes. Tell me about That's a wonderful theater. It disappears sometimes, but that's <laughs> <laughs> Magic Theater. Go ahead. I, well, I've had the good fortune to work sort of all over San Francisco. So I worked there. I worked with uh, a theater company called Campo Santo recently uh -huh. who d do really incredible work, take original plays, and are really, I think, at the center of kind of what is uh -huh. happening in San uh -huh. Francisco theater. Um, I worked with uh, another company called The Fifth Floor, who've been influenced a lot by Ann Bogart, and um, do a lot of really interesting non-narrative stuff uh -huh. that doesn't make any money for <laughs> anyone, but is very enjoyable it to It seems to like you see. guys are really enjoy working in theater. Yes, it's I'm, true. Am I right? You're, you're absolutely right, which is something that I think is, is part of the adjustment of being in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which is because it's such a, a film-influenced, television-influenced right, town. Right, right. You've done movies. You've done, a matter of fact, Sleep Come Free With Me, or what is that all Sleep about? Sleep Come Free Me is a film. It's a short film that uh, I did a year ago and won the Audience Choice Award at the Gay and Lesbian Film Festival. Gay and Lesbian Film Festival? Right. Now, were you a lesbian in this, or what? I was in the film, yes. In the film? <laughs> really? Yes. How come you're getting such roles like... Uh, well, you know... Go ahead. It, part of it is, you know, who you, you start to work with with certain people, and and it's a, and San Francisco especially is a small. The theater community is a small, small community. Yes. We all know one another, and you just sort of work with with who you're working with. Uh -huh. And it's also a, a very gay city. So th and is there's it a lot really of work. gay city, San Francisco? I mean, I know it's gay, but is it really? It totally really is. Gay. Is it really? Well, totally. The gay voice no. is really. The gay voice <laughs> the city is. It's entire 100 percent gay. <laughs> the is city really? only just, likes other cities out. of the same sex. <laughs> why did it all go to San Francisco? What, what is, have you discovered why, be, uh, Brian? All I know is about San Francisco, it is such a melting pot, like, like New York or other cities right. and stuff. Um, there's, ri there's no room for any kind of prejudice. There's no, there there's isn't just no really? room for it. No, really? you're on the street every single day with uh -huh. these people. Um, it's not as crazy as New York. It's not as intense or... Mm -hmm. Hard to live, right? I don't know. Well, there, there's also an, you know the history of San Francisco was it's really it was a, a gold rush town. It was, absolutely. And so you had you had mostly you know workers and prostitutes, and so it was a very open-minded town. City, where really, it's people, always been. Yeah, yeah, where single people went there to make a lot of money, uh -huh. and so they weren't they they weren't steeped in the same kinds of of values that included being settled with a family. They were there. They were sort of free spirits. Free, it's a so. free spirit city. Mm -hmm. you're up, is that what you're trying? But you're doing it's Universal Theater. You're so busy. Universal Studios, it's yeah. Good, yeah. Tell me about that. The well, Phantom been, of the Phantom Opera? Phantom of the Opera, <coughs> the, the hip Phantom of the Opera with uh, white spiky hair and purple tips and a purple sequin jacket and silver mask and it's all the universal, classic universal monsters in a rock and roll show, the Beetlejuice Graveyard Rock and Review. Is this every day you're doing this? Five times a day. Five times a day at Universal Studios? Four or five days a week for five years. Real? You've been there five years? Yeah. It's great S job. Is it? Is it's it a really? great job. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. It's where I made all my friends in L.A., got all my connections. Mm -hmm. We've got major people working there, people that have done ragtime and, and TV. And right, right, right. Just top of, top of the line. So you're really on stage a lot. A lot. A lot. So you have learned. What have you learned being on stage a Vacations lot? Vacations are nice. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I, being on stage is almost as natural as being off stage now and sometimes even more comfortable. Uh -huh. So uh, Now you're doing a musical, I think, with Sid Caesar and uh, Carl Reiner. Tell me about this world thing around the world. Around the World in 80 Days, which is the working title now. It's an animated feature for Nickelodeon Pix, which is a new division of Nickelodeon Television. Right. And I play Trevor, a uh, 
a parrot who was raised in a lab watching television and listening to radio. Uh -huh. So in this cartoon, I speak about 40 different uh, dialects, different voices and languages and mm -hmm. stuff. And that should be out around November, December of this year. And Working. I got to work with Sid Caesar and Carl Reiner, Chaka Khan, uh, Willem Dafoe came in. It was amazing. That's great. Huh? It was amazing, and I was petrified. They're Why would you be petrified? Because they're the greats. <laughs> well, Chaka Khan, she's, she's <coughs> nice. But um, it was really fun. Sid Caesar and Carl Reiner, Reiner flanking me for this one thing that we did, and it was mm -hmm. one of the heights. What have you learned about Los Angeles theater, uh, Alexis? Um, I think it's hard <laughs> to say r now because I really haven't been back here long enough to uh -huh. to really know. But I think that I think that um, as I said earlier, I think that L. A. is a town that is so influenced by television that it seems to me um, that there is less of a willingness to kind of to to play around with mm -hmm. more experimental forms. Like this play has a lot of the and this first half of the play, or a little more than that, really has a lot of short scenes that sort of jump around. You're following a lot of different characters' sort right. of stories. Mm -hmm. And then the second half is a little more plot-driven so that you have, you have it all sort of getting wrapped up. And it seems to me that there are a number of people who have really responded more to the second half right. because it's a more familiar format. Uh -huh. It's what you see on television, right. which is just you know plot-driven. You got your mm -hmm. story, and it all wraps up in the end. And, and I'm actually more generally, my taste lean more toward the less traditional sort of right, format right, where right. you have all, like uh, all these different stories and you're sort of identifying with a number of different people in the show and not just you're not just sort of ha you haven't just allied yourself with mm -hmm. one person mm -hmm. and and follow that story to the end so I think it's maybe a little bit fearful uh -huh. there's a little bit of fear here to really experiment um, how's the audiences uh, are comparing audiences to, to San Francisco, yeah. they've been great. I was actually nervous about that, and people had said, you know, LA audiences will really sit on their hands and are not going <laughs> to respond at all. Yes, you're at and this theater though. It's a very cute little theater. It's called the Zephyr on Melrose. Zephyr on Melrose, seventy four fifty six, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Zephyr. So tell me what else. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, so it's been great. I mean, the audiences the have audience. been really great. They're uh -huh. not at all. Um, reticent or afraid to really express themselves. Uh -huh. They're really with the show and having a great time. And afterwards, it's so great because everybody's hanging out. I mean, a number of people have hung out after the show who don't know anybody in the cast just to right. say, you know, what a great show it is yeah. and how much fun they had. Yeah, it's not just a gay audience. You have a, a mixture. I've seen old mm -hmm. people there, old, old, I mean. Right. Real. And they're laughing up a yeah. storm. Right, right. We had, we had one older laugher that, you know, we were all sort of in we love were, with. Yeah, I, I had dialed 9-1. I was waiting for the last one at, at one point because she was just... Who did you study acting with, uh, Brian? Uh, just college professors. And no, did you go to actor studios or any no. of those? No. How about you, Alexis? I didn't either. I went to Sarah Lawrence. Really? I went to Sarah Lawrence. You went Lawrence to Sarah Lawrence. Sarah Lawrence. Yeah, you remind me of a Sarah Lawrence girl. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't yeah. know how to take that. <laughs> you know what a Sarah Lawrence girl does? <laughs> no. No, go ahead. You do remind me of a Sarah Lawrence. When were you there? I was there. Uh, I graduated in 94. Uh huh. What made um, Alexis Lizen get into the business? What? Why? What? Well, I'll tell you my theory on that, <laughs> Skippy, <laughs> which is that I'm an identical twin. Are and you really? mm -hmm. and my sister and I, from the time we were babies, people would always stop us and talk to us uh -huh. because we were twins, and we kind of developed a kind of shtick with each other because just I think as a way of coping, really to confuse <laughs> each other. Okay, go ahead, people. <laughs> well, not yeah. even to confuse them, just because they were always waiting for us to perform because oh. we looked alike, and they were sort of always waiting for a show. So we kind of developed this sort of shtick with each uh -huh. other, uh -huh. and and it was just part of my kind of development as a person uh -huh. early on was that I sort of felt I had that impulse to want to entertain people. Right, right. So really I can't ever remember a time when I it wasn't something that I knew I really wanted to do. There have been a lot of different times in my life when I wasn't sure I really wanted to be an actor and I maybe was going to sort of try to sublimate those desires uh -huh. and do something else with it. But I've always had that performative kind of instinct. Mm -hmm. And um, and luckily I, I, I I have continued with it in my adult life. So, Brian, <laughs> uh, five days, uh, five days a week. I mean, five days a night. Is it five day? I mean, five uh, for shows. Shows. For Universal. Yeah, Universal. Yeah. Come on. 
any uh, mishaps there? Come on, and share oh. some like, mishaps with us. We oh. must have some outrageous things. Yeah, I'm, I'm I don't know, tw <coughs> 20 feet in the air on top of three stacked cars with explosions and fire. Are you really? And stairs running up and down stairs. And I've fallen down the stairs. I've fallen up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I've... Uh, Picked a woman out of the audience that I have to dance with to find out that she is indeed a man. That was fun. Uh -huh. um, I've tripped and rolled across the stage and slammed into a door and popped back up, and most people didn't even see that I fell. <laughs> uh, there's, oh, there's been how many, many. How many, many of the things. cast of that Universal show? It's uh, six. Big. There's oh, Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, The Phantom, and Beetlejuice, who's the narrator. Really? really? Yeah. Because I know there's a lot of accidents happen at Universal. Tell us why. They, they, you know. Disgruntled workers, right? No, uh, <laughs> uh, th we don't have major accidents. No, nope. I mean, no, we have people hit their knees, and you know, oh. it's it's typical show stuff. It's not like you know, fires on the lower lot. We don't have those kind of things happen. <laughs> now, the director, uh, Alexis, who's the director of this? The last hairdresser, Danny it's Shea. And Danny he, Shea, uh -huh, and he also is the sort of central character. He's in the show. The sh also. He's in the show, right? And he did that in San Francisco as well. And so you worked with him in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. and I've worked with him, actually, this is my fourth production with him. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What others has, have you done? Uh, a couple of years ago, we did a play called The Stand-In by Keith Curran, which was also... Right. I think, I think there was a production of it here. Right, it was. And, uh, I remember that, yes. We did that, we did this show, and we did uh, a show called The Lady in Question. Uh-huh. The winner of the best play and best actor, Danny... Critic Award, Bayes Critic Awards. What was that about? For here, this show right here? For, for this show, yeah. Really? The, the San Francisco production. Uh huh. He won the Bayes. What did the drama log say about this show? I haven't read the drama log to review. Uh, what backstage was? West. Yes, Backstage West. Which came out they today. Changed. Why they, ch they changed it to Backstage West? Yes, they, yeah. they combined. Uh, it came out <coughs> actually today, and we got Critics Pick. It and did. It's, it's a wonderful review. It's great. Yeah, I'm. I'm just coming off that cloud. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Uh -huh. it was nice. Uh -huh. So whoever wrote it, thank you very much. I think Danny is walking in. Is this Danny? It's just true. come on in, Danny. Be Danny the camera Shea. be focusing on me and just duck down and just come on in. There he comes. Hello, Danny. Hi. <laughs> God, I've been plugged that in. And oh, how nice. are you? I just do. We just just <laughs> clipped on your sweater. That was some production. Danny, tell me, mm -hmm. you are the director. You oh, had problems ooh. getting it's here. Up. Is that it? Don't worry about it. Just hug. You had problems getting here, is that it? Yeah, there's horrible traffic. Yes, it is. Tell me about your uh, play. And also, I was just talking the Best Actors Award, Best Critics Award in San Francisco. And uh, tell me, Santa Cruz and all those places you've done, you're living in San Francisco and yeah. came here. Yeah, I'd spent about 10 years doing almost nothing but Shakespeare. And then in the last Ten five years, years of Shakespeare. Yeah, oh, doing... Uh, okay doing a lot of new gay plays in San Francisco this sort uh -huh. of last five years, and it's fun when I can mix and match those, those two kinds of things, which in some ways, The Last Hairdresser is like a Shakespeare play. It has uh, all these different plots that weave together, and they right. do sort of come together in the last scene. We sometimes call the last scene of this play Act Five, uh -huh. because it's like the last scene of Shakespeare, and it has many different places. It takes place in uh, New York and San Francisco and the Midwest and so it's, it's really a epic. basis of everyone's place. Yes, of, uh, right. That's what it, it really is. Oh, all comes together. Where are you originally from? I was born in Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico, yeah. which is a very good theater town. You know, uh, I, Santa Fe. I near. don't know. You've never been. <laughs> okay, you left but there. You got I away. Um, right away, huh? Yeah, I um, I uh, lived most of my childhood in Chicago and all over the Midwest. Uh huh. Goodman, uh, did you study at Goodman in Chicago? No, I didn't. I studied at Indiana and Berkeley. Oh, okay. UC Shakespeare is tough. Have you done Shakespeare? Not really. <coughs> I don't think so. No. What made Never. Danny get into Shakespeare, Danny? That's a <laughs> tough, tough. Well, I think our boy went to London. That's he good. studied at RADA, and he left uh, Dr. Kildare and, and got into Shakespeare and became a fine actor. And that's what, if you can do Shakespeare and turn around and do the others, that's, well, they say it's tough. Well, you can't, if you can do Shakespeare, <coughs> it's, it's hard. Right. It's so hard to make clear. Nobody really understands uh, what they're saying. So once you can do Shakespeare, the other stuff is easier. It's sometimes after you do Shakespeare a lot and then you do a regular play, it's like, this is so much easier. You don't have to worry about trying to explain to the audience what the words mean. Right, right, right. So, so Tanny, tell me, you wrote this play. I didn't write this you play. You didn't write it. Who I did? directed it and uh, acted it. Doug Holsclaw. 
who's a San Francisco playwright. Uh -huh. Where did he get his ideas from this, the words? That, that it's, I think he's a really, it's like really every funny Queen's guy. Words. Like every, he must have been everywhere because it's <laughs> just like, <laughs> I've heard these words everywhere I've been. Go ahead. He grew up in Nebraska, uh -huh. left school, like the character that I play, Guy Voss, does, left school in the middle at University of Nebraska. It's University of Minnesota in right. the play. And went to New York, and worked in New York, came to L.A., ended up in San Francisco. That's what the play is really about. Yes. Basically. But I think it is every gay man's journey a little bit. Uh -huh. Every Nelly gay man. Now, you've done television different. work, have you? And very little. Very a little, little bit. You, you, you did done some. You've done films. You did films. I see. Are you going to decide that, that about this play? Is this going to turn into a, a little... I think it could be interesting in a sitcom. Well, Doug's written a screenplay. For a sitcom, um, for a, a TV, I think it could be, I don't know about a screenplay, but a, I think a sitcom every week, I think this could be very interesting. Okay. I'm just, no, I'm talking <laughs> I'm about I'm on. Theater. How about you guys? That's yeah. fine. Yeah. He was telling me the theater people are just coming out there. How do you find the audiences here in L.A.? They're great. They're just great. They howl and scream mm -hmm. and gasp. I well, love the San audiences Francisco? What do you here? think about San Francisco audiences? I thought they're the best. I think they might be, I don't know, what do you think? They might I be a little more reserved and judgy up there. Oh, really? Oh, I don't think so. You think uh, so? I don't know. I think, I mean, I was saying, I had the impression before I got here that that LA audiences would be like that, and then they haven't turned out to, right. to be as critical as I thought they would be. But I think they're a little bit, I think there's a, there might be a little kind of sense of intellectual pretension in San Francisco where people are re watching <laughs> things critically and they're aware that they're watching it critically mm -hmm. whereas here I think people are really ready to be entertained and they're not they're not waiting to hate it really mm -hmm. but if they hate it they're going to be clear about it I think that's <laughs> like the the play one of the things that bothers some people is that it does have this structure as I said that Shakespearean it's kind of epic it goes all over the place it, it does has run. all yeah. these different plots that don't uh -huh. come together till the end but it also has this feel or smell of a sitcom. I mean, lots it of does. jokes, right. uh, accessible kind of modern characters, some of them very, you know, one-dimensional characters. So I think that, in, I think Alexis is right. In San Francisco, people, if they sniff it being sitcom-y, they get judgy and tune out, whereas people don't hear in L.A. The sitcom is a completely That's what they want. recognized yeah. and validated they're, they're used form. To that. Yes, yeah, but not in San Francisco. That, I agree with you mm -hmm. there, yeah. Too many laughs in San Francisco, and they're a little suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> if the audience is actually having a good time and not suffering a little Are you bit. having a good time in the play? It seems like you're having a ball in this play, getting it's spanked and all that. Yeah. Naughty well, that's, boy. That's good any time, as you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> it's, um, it's a blast to do. I mean, once it opened, I mean, sort of like with the show, once the, the play opened, but also every night once it opens, I have that first monologue. I'm sure Brian and Alexis have moments like this as well, where they laugh, for sh you know, they laugh big and hard at you, uh -huh. and then after that, it's like free skate. Yeah. It's right, really yeah. fun yeah. to do. Right, yeah, yeah. right, right. You seem like you're having a good time, Alexis, also, with the boys. How many yeah. girls are there? You're only, you're there's just two. There's a, yeah, there's another there's woman. Now the girl, just mm -hmm, two. Mm -hmm. and, and all the boys. Yeah. And all guys are having a great time. Yeah, it's like a regular USO tour. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know or about this boys. one, the USO <laughs> tour for that one. The boys in, the boys in Germany are, they would, uh, well, yeah, they would probably like it. Oh, sure, fun. especially in they Germany. They would like it. You know. I think the wax would really like Alexis, <laughs> don't you think? The wax. The wax. <laughs> <laughs> You're very funny. Wax in the waves. Uh huh. Tell me about <coughs> the um, the theater at this lovely Zeppelin Theater. It's a small little theater. It seats ninety, and it's like a theater of the round, isn't it? Actually, like a little a, bit of a little round, narrow, uh, shallow. Narrow, yeah, because you're sitting. Uh, and I think it's interesting because you when you're performing, I was on the side watching oh, you the were? show. Yeah, and I like it better. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, instead of looking, because I like to see the actors, what are they going to do. I'm here on the side, and I like to see if they're going to carry on over here. That's see, I, that's my judgment of the theater, <sighs> and I, you all did it beautifully, and I think it's it's, it's tougher when it when to, to it's it's a little harder to include those people on the side. Um, uh -huh. But again, that's like a, that's like a Shakespeare play. That's exactly what the stage is built to do. The stage, to yes, do. exactly. It, it changes your acting a little bit. You have to be more open and share, and uh -huh. a little more. Uh, Did you study uh, in uh, Hollywood at all since you've been here? You no, guys don't study to keep your. You just just 
do your plays and that's because actors do all study workshops. Stuff. They yeah. keep working all I the time. I teach quite a bit. Oh, you teach? Yeah. Oh, yeah, up, up okay. North at UC Santa Cruz and Stanford, and I teach at Pixar Animation Studios. The people that do so Bugs you do Life teach and acting, Toy Story, and voice yeah. technique and all that. So yes, I do. So it's sort of like taking class at the same time because if you say stuff that you you have to make sure you believe it and do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be a, a stand-up comedian? Because you're so funny. You ever tried to do stand-up? Never did stand-up, and it scares me a little bit. Why? Why would that scare I you? I think... Um, you need, you need the monologue to carry, hold you back there, or what? I like, no, if people don't laugh at my jokes in real life, <laughs> I hate them. So the head, I turn off to the people, so I'm afraid I would... Uh, Go to the comedy store and try to do a five-minute bit, all three of I you. It's kind of interesting. Actors are doing that now. They're all writing little bits, and they get on stage and just be honest. Yeah. Just, just talk. Just a little. Well, it's I kind did of a, interesting. I did a one-man show last year that I wrote in oh. San Francisco called Dr. Shea's Traffic School, which was a blast. But I totally had my script. Oh, okay. Yeah. First. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think I believe in the text a little bit. I admire stand-up comics. It's I, hard. Yeah. I tried to do it once, and I. But I'm a, more of a storyteller, so I would start telling a long story and then. Th everybody was asleep or giving me the <laughs> finger, uh <-huh. laughs> and so it it wasn't doesn't Alexis, work. Alexis, are you are you going out for commercials and, and sitcoms and stuff like that while you're here in the movies? Uh, no, no, not actively. I would like to be, but I haven't been. So you far. haven't because you're involved with the play right now. Is that it? <laughs> Is that taking <laughs> yeah. a lot of your time? Actually, now it's great because we have we're, we're running Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, right. And so we, it's nice because we had a pretty heavy duty rehearsal schedule, and now we're kind of things are cleared up a little bit. I'd like to show just this picture of all the cast. <laughs> My God, what a big cast! Look at this. Nine this of us. Nine. Wow, it's a big cast. It's it's a very very funny show. It really oh, is. Oh, thanks. And it's directed beautifully. I'm, I must you. tell you, you directed it. Or is it hard for you to direct this? Well, it was funny because I directed it before, and sort of, I love the way it turned it out. So beautiful and simple with just those two curtains and stuff. Uh, I and like that, that little simplicity. Thrust. Yeah, that was but very simple. It's so you try to make it simple. It was hard to restage, uh -huh. and it's sort of like, you know, a real sleight of hand that you have to go all these places and tell all these stories with basically two sets of curtains and nine actors. Uh -huh. But the, the result, it forces you to be creative every time. The scene changes, and I think right. you did a pretty good job of that. Do you know you, Brian works at Universal Studios? I, I can't believe no. it. Five <laughs> shows, and then he goes on weekends with the theater here. and uh, It's hard work, Brian. It is know? hard work, but it's all I know how to do. Well, you know, you're just and you just do su s voiceovers and all that Voice sort of thing. Voiceovers and, and music editing. I do that a little bit, too. Music com editing? Computer stuff, just do in you case. Really? Yeah. Just in case and also else falls naked through. singing on stage, naughty boy singing naked. And there's even a little naked. There's a little there's a bit. Mini naked there is a naked. Is there naked scenes in your show too? It's me and mini. Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Stop saying mini. <laughs> just you and Brian. It's a little. Yes. Yes. It's a Do max. Sh charming, scene. endearing, cute naked scene. Naked. We've charming. all I done like them. Those skippy. words. That's a nice word. Yes. Good words. Boys. Very uh, boyish and very yes. simple words. Very yeah. Endearing. Very nice. I agree. The show is really wonderful. I really thought it was hysterical, uh, very fun. Cool. Just take it as it, you go in there to enjoy. Th it's only theater, and take it. You know, I went to see Cabaret the other day, and I thought Cabaret was great because it was Cabaret it should be, you know. I'm not seeing Liza Minnelli. Uh, you go to see Cabaret. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm screaming ca Liza Minnelli. Same as, you, oh. know, you know, oh, she's great. Don't take me wrong. <laughs> but I'm just saying. You <laughs> know what I mean. <laughs> I love her Pisces. What sign are you? I'm a Gemini. You don't oh, know yeah. which one you're Judy talking. was a Gemini. Uh, you don't, I know she was. <laughs> My mother is a and Gemini. She's a Gemini, your mother. And that's uh -huh. why she had twins, That's darling. right. That's you right. Are, you, how's your other sister? Is she in the business? She isn't. She isn't. She, no, to my chagrin. I wish that she were, because it's fun, really fun. Is to, she? To, yeah, she's a great actress, and it's really fun to act with her, but... Did you both went to Sarah? Uh, Sarah Lawrence? No, Lawrence? she went to Smith uh -huh. in, in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. went to Sarah Lawrence. Uh -huh. I love New Haven and the Connecticut's and all those places. Uh, New Hampshire's. You ever go back east, New York? Yeah, I do. You work like New York? New York. Have you, yes. But I like I like California better. I'm interviewing mm -hmm. Quentin Crisp next week. Oh, oh my Quentin words. Crisp is arriving into town. Great. He's going to be doing at the gay uh, club there. Um, Highland or somewhere? 
He's going to be functioning, doing his speech, and does his one-man show for all the gay and lesbians on uh, Highland, I think it is. Or for the, all of them? Yeah, well, whatever we have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, He's not all the ones in San Francisco. He is <laughs> incredible. Right. He was that at Theatre Rhino thing. where this place started in San Francisco just a few oh, months ago. Oh, he was. Yeah. Yes, and packed the houses and He did his one-man outrageous. show. Uh -huh. Isn't he uh, incredible? Have you ever seen him? I've seen him before, yeah. I think he's just incredible. He's the greatest. Yes. The 90 minutes of it he did? Wow. 90, and he's what, 90-some years old, isn't he? No. He lives in one little room in the village in New York, and it's just enough to lay your hat and a coat and a friend. I it's understand. right by Manila Lane Theater. <laughs> really, believe yeah. me, it's so, so heard. small. Really, pardon? It's right by Manila Manetta Lane Theater. I think yes, yes. The well, we're all going to come down to see the last hairdresser. Yes, yes. Good. Danny. Great. Thank you for dropping by. You oh. were a little late, but sorry. that's okay. I'm so oh, sorry. and Lexis, darling, <laughs> you're charming as ever. Thank you. Very and nice to Brian, meet you. Thank you. Very good meeting you. That's it. All right. We're up. Thank, thank you. Right. That was fun. Oh, Mary, where were you?